Is it not that? Yes. No problem, man. Maybe you guys want to come over here a bit. The, the action will be here actually, so yeah, maybe you just gotta come over here. here. I'm so sorry about that, but um, if you guys don't need the tables, maybe you can just bring the chairs. Uh, Jeffrey, maybe you can help. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, green drinks is actually just a, uh, uh, it's a gathering of uh, green people like you guys. So, most important thing is, well, uh, we, uh, how's it? Have a platform for you guys to actually like meet uh, uh, meet with each other, uh, well network, meet uh, I mean learn something new, and we try to post it like every single two months once. Uh, so we do it on the first uh, on your first Thursday of each month. All right. So um, let me start with the ground rules here. Um, well, we really thank I mean we really want to thank uh, the Green Factory for providing us with this uh, wonderful place. I know it's a bit cramped, I'm so sorry, uh, we will we'll figure out something in the future. But, um, so, uh, what is it called? Yeah, the, the ground rule is uh, perhaps, uh, if, I mean, it would be good if actually every, but, uh, everyone buy something from Green Factory. So maybe at least a cup of drinks or something. Right? Uh, okay, second is uh, not really a ground rule, but. Every one of you are entitled 10% discount. And then, um, as you go, if you're a student, just show your ID to the cashier, and then you get 15% discount for each meal, I mean, each, every, everything you order. Okay? And third of all uh, is, uh, how's it? In the future, if you want to uh, order some, eh, sorry, you want to, I mean, to, to come to this event, uh, just register yourself in the event, right? Uh, it will be, I mean, it will be, it's a very good platform for us to know how many of you guys are coming. Okay, and also um, we do have one donation jar uh, at the registration uh, counter. So, well, if you think that you learned something and if you feel like you want to contribute something, just uh, feel free to do so. Um, so, okay, uh, before I start, I would like to start with, uh, okay, do you see some fruits in front of you, like the banana. Okay, I mean like, you guys have it? Yeah. Okay. Um, just eat it, it's on us, uh, and don't throw the pills away. We are going to collect it. So, the topic of today is not the banana, but the banana peel. So usually, after you have, I mean you eat uh, the, let's say, fruits, so how do you I mean, where, where, where do you uh, throw, let's say, the peels and so on? Just usually dustbin. So, so I just want to ask, uh, any of you actually do compost at home? Uh, how, how many of you? Wow, quite a lot! That's good, Emily, you did it! Oh my goodness! Okay, so uh, I think that's around 20% or 10% of you. Uh, more than that. Yeah. So, just want to ask, uh, why are you guys here? You know how to do compost, why are you guys here? Uh, sorry? Because you bring friends here and then you want to bring off them to, to do compost as well. Wow. Okay. Alright. Um, perhaps there will be, I mean, uh, perhaps there will be something we can learn today as well. Uh, so, well, today we are actually very happy to be able to invite uh, Miss Lee uh, Moyi. She, I mean, we know her through Saddam. Uh, Saddam, and then, I mean, how was it? Uh, firstly, we invited Miss Tan, but then unfortunately she can't make it. So, uh, she actually highly, highly introduced Miss uh, Lee. And then, uh, so today Miss Lee is going to share with us her experience on uh, composting. She has done composting many, many years. And she has tons of experience in it. And <laughs> okay, and this afternoon I actually uh, been to her garden, and then well, I just I mean I, when I walk in, I, I really I'm, I'm really happy actually. So I, I can see all the the, the the plants, the big fat papaya, the, the, the pineapple, the passion fruit tree. No passion fruit unfortunately, but uh, <laughs> not yet. Okay, um, and then I I mean, do, do you use any fertilizer? Okay, so you never use any fertilizer and just use the compost alone. 
Okay, so, well, um, she, she has done this composting and she has like more than three beans of it. And then, um, use the compost, put back into the, the, the food, and then I can see that she has like spinach and so on, so if she wants to cook, she can just go to the garden, cut something and then serve to the dish. So yeah, um, well, um, how's it? Let's, let us all welcome uh, Miss Lee uh, to, to share uh, a little bit about our composting. Can, can you increase the volume? And who's recording in the volume? It doesn't happen overnight, okay? You must bear with organic staff. You know organic staff do composers and you will have to expect certain challenges when you do home composting. Alright? Um, now, um, I actually not from Set Dan, but I know Miss Tan who's from Set Dan, and she actually has some books here which literature on composting. And she will also be hosting some home composting uh, activity. And um, there will also be a Hari Organic in June uh, in Banda Utama. So anybody who is interested later, you can, uh, if you have phone number and all, or WhatsApp, then we can WhatsApp to you uh, uh, the details of all the upcoming activities. Alright, as I said, I'm not from Zetland, but I occasionally have to promote the uh, environmental and the uh, sustainable uh, um, activities for recycling, reusing, and all that. Okay, now, um, I see just now that a few of you have done home composting before. So, um, this is actually not my normal bean. My normal bean is actually See the red and the blue beans? Those are the ones. Um, I think uh, some of them are the beans that I was shown. Okay, this is the bean. It's actually a rubbish bean, okay? Plastic rubbish bean, you can use so, um, Zetdam has converted this into a bean for home composting. So, what we basically do is, the base of the bean, we cut it out. Okay? And then we drill holes at the side and at the top. This is for circulation of the air that you do the compost. 
helps you improve the method of us, uh, and decompose the method of us. So the, the top is not uh, the top uh, at the bottom, and the top is uh, covered with the green cover. Now, um, we actually do this on the ground, but since we're doing a demo, uh, just put it on the table for you all to see. So the first layer of the compost is uh, you can have dry leaves, uh, grass, you know, vegetation. Any dry or uh, dry vegetation doesn't matter. But nothing that can be, takes a long time to be composed. Okay? Certain things take a long time. Okay? So uh, I usually use a lot of uh, hot grass, uh, leaves from the trees. Uh, to be dry, to be fresh. And then uh, we put about six inches of the vegetation. Okay? And later if you want, there is a book there for sale so you can find the information there. Okay? Um, then um, as every day you are cut fruits, you are cut vegetables. So you throw it in the rubbish bin. So instead of throwing the rubbish bin, you collect it into the bin. You know, it depends on how big your family is. Uh, when I first started composting, uh, uh, I think I was the only one with a lot of beans. The rest only had one bean which they couldn't feel, but I could feel two beans. So I told them I had a big family. That's why I eat the whole a lot. So that's why my beans get filled up. Okay? So, alright, the first layer, vegetation from the garden. If there is no vegetation, sometimes you see the man outside the grass. You can collect the grass and use it as the compost as well. Okay, um, if you go to the uh, park, uh, there might be some vegetation which you can collect there as well. Um, <laughs> okay, the color is better. Okay. Um, okay, so the, the vegetation you just collect and you fill it about six inches or so, you get higher. Of the matter. It's just that you, you do it. Um, then the next thing is you put in your kitchen rice. Your kitchen rice, uh, as I said, food peels, vegetable peels. Uh, leftover food you can put in, but uh, my leftover food goes to the dog. Okay, so it doesn't get wasted. Um, and then, the, then you cover up again with another layer of vegetation. You can put some soil in if you want, and you keep doing it every day. If you don't have enough, then you do it every two, three days. Okay? But if you want, then you just collect it in the smaller bin before you transfer it to the big bin. So every day, you just like layering. You do layering. Uh, layer of dry leaves to grass, layer of your kitchen rays, cover up with your another layer of vegetation, and some soil if you want. And you go, I think you peel up to the top. Then you leave it. You cover it, you leave it. You leave it for about three weeks or so. After the uh, three weeks or so, then uh, you take them out. You transfer it to another. Uh, you see my beans just have this angle, so there is a bit so you transfer it to the, another site nearby so that you can take the compost and transfer it into the bin again. You do it about one, seven, three, four weeks. Okay. This is to get uh, the, the, uh, the compost to compost faster. Okay. Uh, basically, we do it that, and then the, uh, the challenge is that sometimes you have. Uh, maggots. So, you have to be very patient with it. So according to this time, if there are maggots, that means there's not enough oxygen circulation. Okay? So, uh, then you have to uh, uh, work a bit harder on it. Alright? So, uh, by about three to four months or so, the compost will mature with you. And there won't be any smell in the compost. It's just like so, but it's rich, so it's uh, black gold, we call it, you know. And normally I use compost 
to uh, fertilize my garden, my plants, and all that. Um, so that, uh, you know, I, I don't actually buy fertilizer. But certain fruits apparently you need fertilizers. So the only thing I bought is chicken dung. That is good for my, uh, I call that, the passion fruit, I heard. So, and, uh, so that's what I use it for, like my compost. Okay. Um, as I said, we have this composting book which will tell you more about what you need to do and all that. Uh, these are all from Septem and they are five weekends of the book. And she also has a lot of other literature because Septem also um, do a lot of uh, sustainable uh, uh, activities. Okay, so um, anybody has any questions? <coughs> Anyone have any questions? Is there any way to prepare like wraps or cockroaches? Um, I think you have to cover it from me. I usually when I cover it, I put something heavy on top, so the rats don't go. The only thing I have is squirrels sticking down. Okay? I have a lot of squirrels. We always competing for my foods. Okay? Uh, but my dogs do chase them. We have a very good run. Okay. Yes, next. Oh, um, if we are, there is a lady who didn't actually have a garden, but she did manage to do a compost. She, I think she put the sign or something, I'm not sure whether they have it. Yeah, in this photo, you can see, uh, on the, this one, okay? Ah, uh, yeah, this one. Uh, you can do it in your balcony if you are living in a house yeah. building or you know you have to cover it yeah, once it's covered the plants don't come in uh -huh. cover it okay and then you have to make every two to four weeks okay um, but as I said you do have maggots on and off but you, you have to persevere okay uh, according to this time, the matters to be due to lack of oxygen. So, you have to aerate it, burn it, and all that. Okay, uh, next question, anybody? Uh, hi. Uh, I, okay. So, already catching this now. Do you have to, like, aerate it from time Oh, yeah, to time? yes, we call it burning. So, uh, about three to four weeks or so. Once the bomb is filled up, Okay, then I will start my next day. So in the meantime, I wait two to four weeks while I fill up the other thing. And then uh, after three weeks or so, as I said, I will leave, leave out the bin, transfer it over, okay, to another side. Now, the other thing is, keep it dry. No rain water, nothing. So keep it under the shade. Um, mine is actually under the shade, um, under the banana trees. So it's quite shady and uh, there's uh, so you know uh, this is the one that has been matured already. Okay, so it's dry. Once it was pulled to the top, now it's after two months or so. Okay, um, I need to bring some compost here. Home grown compost. So pass it around. You can smell it. Happy uh, the smell of it. So when you do your compost, you have a lot of surprises. You're throwing papaya seeds, you're throwing mango seeds, whatever seeds you're throwing, something will sprout. So my house, when I throw the compost everywhere to water, to fertilize my plants, it will come out papaya tree. I don't know what species that is, you know? So I have a sort of all sorts of papaya trees in the house. I don't know what species they are. So it's the benefit of it. Um, uh, yeah, there shouldn't be any smell, it's called the black girl, according to this time. So, all sorts of seeds are inside. Oh, I don't know what they germinate. Okay, uh, anybody else have any questions? Um, you can pass the soil and run compost around as well. Yes? Is there anything uh, organic? 
Like anything that we think that, oh, you know, we need banana or something. Oh, banana skins are fine. Uh, yeah, I throw the lot of bananas. We need a lot of bananas. My husband does bananas. So every uh, uh, weekend, we have lots of bananas. I also have banana skins in my house. I have nice pisang tando with my husband. Top for because he doesn't like cow trees. Okay. Uh, what about what, what should we not? Sorry? What should we not? Most organic stuff can be composted, uh, but even thrown in fish bones, okay? Um, animal bones, yeah, cow bones, chicken bones, whatever. That's all thing. Sometimes I go to the restaurant, you know, you eat some lamb, you have bones, okay, a pop out, go to the kitchen, in a box, you have it, then you can compose your habit. That's it, no? Uh, basically, anything can be composted. Some of the vegetation, we try not to get those that are hardy. You know, that will take a long time to do composer, get leaves, yeah. Uh -huh. So I do grow a lot of stuff in my garden. Um, okay, actually, um, I'm supposed to take the vegetation and show you a little bit. I think it's a bit messy. These are all kitchen waste here. We cut them this morning, all the papaya, banana, nice, mango, lemon, whatever. We can all throw it to the compost bin. Uh, anybody else have a question? Would there be any indications of food? Sorry, no, you supposed to keep it dry. Just like so you compost it, put it up somewhere under the shade. Okay? Don't, don't add water. Yeah, I'm not supposed to add water, okay? Don't make it soggy. Okay, <laughs> keep it dry. Um, so my beans are so old, I, I started since uh, 2008 when the MDDJ, in, together with Danida, uh, they had this pilot project where they chose uh, or we applied to join. Uh, we start composting. So we were the first batch in MDDJ. Okay, I think about 50 or 60 hours. I think of, you can say maybe about 70 hours persevere and continue to the end. Uh, so on and off, uh, I set them to organize all this posting and other activities. Okay, uh, questions? Yes? How long does it take to, uh, for the compost uh, to mature? This one takes about three months. Are there any composting methods that are faster than three months? I only do home composting. It's cheap. You don't need to buy anything extra other than the food. Okay? So, um, the rest are all from your home, from the kitchen, from the garden. You just recycle them. Okay? Um, but keep it dry, as I say. I know this is important. Um, okay? So some households might be single households or maybe couples well, then don't in that uh, case, produce. Uh, if it takes you a long time, then you, you just persevere. I think you could, if you don't want to pull up, you can wait for half a Yeah, maybe I can finish my question. Yeah. Maybe I can finish my question. So uh, some household cannot produce enough uh, uh, kitchen waste, right? So are there any community organizations out there that can do community level composting, for, for example, set them? Well, uh, if you do not have enough, sometimes I don't have enough, I go and source at the park where they cut the grass or whatever, or the neighbors. You can take their compost, their, their home uh, vegetable and put it and put it your compost in. Yeah? Uh, but other than that, I think set them is the one that organizes all those things. Uh, you can start in your own garden, uh, uh, you know, ask uh, them to help you give a talk to your garden, in your neighborhood, if you want to do composting. So. But Sadam itself doesn't do community composting, right? I don't know, they have their own uh, activities. Uh, I, I help them on and off and do Okay. Uh, okay, uh, anything else? Yes. Uh, what's the ideal time to 
Oh, I went to my food is full because five, uh, yeah, so there's no, no time limit. But if you feel that you want to wait, if you have another bin, then you start another bin. Uh. But if not, you just fill it up and then you can leave. Uh. And then you, every three days or so, you turn it up. Okay. Um, so anybody has any complaint about my compost? <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. Is everyone seeing the compost? Who has not seen the compost? Show me the compost. Yeah. Okay. When uh, uh, you pass it to the van, they haven't seen some of them. Yeah, the end product. It's a uh, compost. The trick compost only. So, it's three months last. <laughs> Because I have two bins going on at the same time in my house. I also have another big bin. I throw the yeah, I know you inside. So uh, then I use it. I show it to the people at the back. Uh, hello. Uh, someone at the back has not seen. Just touch it to them. Uh, any more questions, anybody? I do mainly home compost. If you ask me about other compost, I don't do it. So this is the easiest, the simplest. I could help you on that. Well, once again, give a big round of applause to Madam Moyi. My name is Bernard. I'm from Green Drinks KL. Uh, I understand you all have a lot of people. I understand you all have a lot of questions. For example, if you stay in condominium, apartment, how do you do compost? For example, if you don't have enough space, uh, is there any community organization which can collect all this? The answer is yes. And actually people around here, we have already professionals uh, composter. We have professional composters here already. They know what they are doing. I would like to invite some of them to give you a slight briefing. Besides home composting, is that fine? Yep. Is yeah. that okay? You all like this? Yep. All right. Uh, please give a big round of applause to Joanne. Joanne, come on. Yeah, a bit of history. I've been running green for the past ten years already, so I know a lot of people. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Joanne been featured many, many times in the newspaper. The one I remember was in the Chinese newspaper, a big one, one page, 20,000 ringgit one. Two page of the composting at home at her condo. So she will share to you about condo composting. All right? Give her a big round of applause. Uh, yeah, thank you for the $20,000 advert, you know? <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, we met um, at uh, Raja Musa tree planting. I see a lot of family faces here, and I think from tree planting, uh, I sort of like thought about uh, what should we do at home. And uh, the good news is this: it's practically free. Yeah, uh, like what Miss Moy shared. I also use um, old buckets that I don't use anymore, and I just go and buy a packet of yellow soil. Yellow soil are more porous, and it's I think only two ringgit fifty cents, uh, and that's where I started. So we just had the soil, and then whenever I have uh, vegetable peels, fruit peels, I would just dump it in, and then I would cover it with another layer of soil. And if I don't have, I will just take my little spatula and just turn it over, and I I don't even cover it. I'm that lazy. Okay. So uh, this is just a, uh, a, a very matter of fact, and, and that's it, and that's my composting. Um, I occasionally surprise myself often because uh, we were laughing just now, whatever we throw in uh, actually sprouts. <laughs> so what we do is actually we transfer, I would transfer it. So I have this relationship with little seedlings now, that if I see something growing, I want to know what it is. So I'll transfer it into another pot, so then I have a series of pots now, alright? So my my bad pots are what I throw in. Okay, sorry, you want me to announce who's new? Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then um, I will find out that little seedlings actually grow. And then um, my first plant was bitter god. I know we had bitter god for dinner. And then when we transferred it, then we had bitter god smaller ones, but then 
about uh, three to four months later, we had bitter gods. But I have friends, uh, they had bought all these, uh, there are some equipment that are about a thousand bucks. Uh, pots like this, they actually have some packets of, I don't know, um, enzyme, you open and then you mix it in. Sorry, too much for me. <laughs> so mine is just a pail, some yellow soil, and that's how I got started. So any questions? Mori, yeah, Mori. <laughs> yeah, it, look, it's 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 an experiment of a kind. Um, I was just listening to what do you do with it when the pail is full? Guess what? I go and see around the park or around um, I um, at our uni. There's plenty of places that you can actually dump fertilizers. Nobody knows. You don't pay them, they don't pay you, but actually it's just a donation to nature. So you just get the satisfaction that you actually fertilize some trees in the past. That's it, that's just some sharing, yeah. Have I disappointed you? Okay. Any more questions? Yes. Uh, my balcony is only like... Um, uh, maybe that table, those two tables together, yeah, it's that small. I, I can't do much. Honestly, it's just an afterthought. Right now, I've reduced my garbage. I only take out garbage once a week. It just consists of wrappings. So whatever I eat, I don't eat, goes to the bin. Whatever is not edible, that's what I throw out. Right? Joanne, a big round of applause. Um, on your questions, um, because today we are very fortunate here, we have one of the biggest uh, organizations uh, called Zero Waste. They are, uh, they are pretty uh, trendy now. It's called Zero Waste. Everyone to live uh, a simple uh, and also zero waste lifestyle when you talk about no straw and whatever. We have a few of them here, but I would love them to come and speak a bit on organizations that would take food waste. All right? Cool. And Tina? All right, please give a big round of applause to Tina. Hi. Uh, I'm uh, actually, uh, I'm not really new in zero base, but I joined the movement. So what I do for a living, I'm not full-time zero, I, I'm per se, zero. I, I, I'm an activist, yeah, I'm actually a social worker. So being, on part being a social worker, zero waste is actually my conviction because I believe creation care and also restoration of the poor and needy social justice. So uh, basically, uh, we have this upcoming zero waste uh, second second festival, the yeah, zero waste uh, Malaysia. They will be coming soon in June twenty second until sorry twenty first until twenty third June. Okay, I hope I get it correct. So all of you will, will come. So it will be held at the Link KL. So there will be a, a business forum talk uh, that will be organized. And also we have been right uh, some zero waste movement from different countries, basically from the Asian country. So all are welcome. And of course we have some activities related to uh, zero waste where you all can practice. And also there will be zero waste market, right? Yeah, zero waste market. So you will know that where to access the facility. And some people may not know, actually we have a park store that's around. So people wondering, uh, where can we get the products? Yeah. So basically, if you come, so mark down your calendar, 21st until 23rd June. Yeah, at the link KL. Yeah, the Sorry, yeah, uh, 22nd to 23rd June. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Just now you asked about the question about. Uh, where is community, what do you call it, a place where you can uh, drop your compost. So basically for me, because I tried Bokashi method before and I don't have enough, uh, because I consume a lot, and eh, not a lot, sorry, the other way, I consume very little, I don't have enough organic waste to produce, yeah. So what I did is, I collect uh, compost from my colleague, my office, I have a uh, ground floor all the way to fifth floor, so I collect, and then uh, I also collect from my house, and also my neighborhood. So I try to get as much as I can and I drop it in a community compo uh, community public site. It's open for public. It's actually nearby my place of, uh, what do you call it, Kebun Kebun Bangsa. Yeah, actually they have a Facebook. You can actually uh, FB them. Uh, it's actually 24 seven because they actually prepare seven bins 
uh, outside. Actually, the operating is actually from 11 until 7, but actually you can uh, get the bin. Actually, you no need to drop it inside the slide. You just can drop it immediately into the bin. Yeah. And another one is actually in TDDI, Edible Community. Yeah, edible oh. community. Yeah. So better for you to text them directly. They are available over Facebook. Thank you very much, Nina. Give her a big round of applause again. <laughs> Anyone here would love to share their, their composting uh, experience or whatsoever? Anyone? Come on. Yes. I understand you do some food stuff. Uh, yes. Yeah. Just come and uh, introduce yourself and then uh, explain uh, what kind of solutions you are doing and uh, how yeah. can you help uh, with the food waste problem? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? How are you doing? Uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, my name's Joe. Uh, I'm from a long way away from here. I'm all the way from Scotland. Woo! Scotland! Thank you, Scotland! Yeah! <laughs> uh, from there, yeah, from there, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to go Scottish. <laughs> Scottish accent. <laughs> the thing is, if I speak real Scottish, you won't understand what I'm saying at all. You'll be like, who the, who the hell is this guy? Um, anyway, it's great to see. Um, I've never been to um, uh, an environmental group quite like this. It's great to see so many people here. Um, and there seems like there's a lot of um, uh, passion to actually do something about uh, food, uh, food waste problems. So that's, that's really, really good. Um, uh, in terms of in terms of composting, the reason why I asked, uh, I'll tell you a story about what I tried. Um, I had a similar problem to sorry, I forgot your name. Tina. Tina. I had a similar problem to Tina, uh, which was that um, I um, uh, I didn't actually produce enough food waste to actually compost anything at all. Uh, so <laughs> I had to go to my neighbours on my floor, and everyone found this very strange. And I knocked on my neighbours' doors to try and to try and get some food waste from them, and they said no. That was, that, that, was, that was the end of my composting experience, unfortunately. So since then, I've been, I've been trying, uh, but yeah, I actually haven't managed, I haven't actually managed to do it. Um, the, the second thing, that was the first thing I wanted to say. The second thing is, um, is that um, I'm also working on an environmental group here in KL. Um, we're not so much on um, composting, um, but we're doing a, an event this month, which is to do with plastic pollution in the ocean. And we've got this really cool guy coming from Indonesia who's invented a way of getting rid of all single-use plastic um, and replacing it with seaweed, which is completely biodegradable and also actually cheaper than the plastic we use currently. So he's coming all the way from Indonesia to come and talk to us. Um, if anyone's interested in, in coming to the event, uh, come and talk to me afterwards um, and we can chat about it. But it'd be great to see loads of you here. Um, we're also going to do things on food waste and you know other environmental problems. So it'd be great if more of you could get involved. I really love what you guys are doing here. So um, it's great to meet you all, and please come and talk to me if you're interested. Thank you very much. Big round of applause. All the way from Scotland. Who else would love to share their experience? One more? No? I would love to share my story here. I just bought a house with my wife, and uh, we need a compost bin. And the compost bin, for information, in the market, it costs you 50 ringgit to 100 or more. Depends on your budget. In my opinion, a bit stingy person, I feel that it's a bit expensive. You buy a 100 ringgit bin for composting. So, while I was painting my house, I have this uh, leftover pail. I told myself uh, I, I, I could make a, a compost bin. You know, uh, inspired from my previous compost bin which I started at my house, uh, at my mom's house. So what I did is, uh, this is a, a paint pail. Uh, I just cut the bottom of it, just cut it away. Uh, I'm trained engineer, only trained person to cut it, okay? Um, so I, I could cut it with the grinder. And uh, what you need to do to make it aerobic, because uh, you saw what Miss Moin uh, in slides, uh, there are holes. So you need to make holes uh, for them to breathe, for the microorganism to breathe. So what you do is you have drill at home, right? Just make 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 holes. No need to be 100% precision, precise, or whatsoever. You just want to serve the purpose. You just want the air to go in. So what you do is just drill it, and then just start dumping. But my uh, experience and my tips to you 
the best thing for compost is um, how do you how do you want to start best is put some soil inside. Soil itself has microorganism. Soil, any soil, yeah, soil, yeah, soil. Yeah, just take it uh, from the ground or whatsoever because it has an existing indigenous um, microorganism, maybe earthworm or whatsoever, that is best to start. It will start to propagate when you give them food. And the food is your food waste. It's your food waste. Anything you can just uh, throw inside, it works. Uh, and it's the best thing to learn about nature, about mother nature. Composting this thing will literally change and transform your garden. I, 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 I saw it with my own eyes uh, in my garden. I see my, my vegetables. If I see it outside, how the farm grows the vegetables, it just grows until this tall. But my house, uh, vegetables could grow up until this tall, straight like a tree. That's really different, yeah. Maybe because of the eggshells or whatsoever, a lot of calcium or whatsoever. I love to eat eggs. Maybe because of the calcium, it grows so tall. So uh, I learned so much because of this bit. So I hope today you learn something and inspire. Study at home. Study at home. Even though you are staying in a condo, try. It's something that uh, will change your life. All right. Any questions? If no, I'll pass back to Miss Muin. Any questions? All right. Muin, pass back to you. Sorry for the wrong, long advertisement. Okay. Um. Now, this is a physical demo. Right, we got some leaves. Okay, um, so Miss Moin is going to show us a demonstration on how to do composting. So, um, well, at first, uh, put in the leaves. Uh, I think I'll, I'll let the dog keep it. The dry vegetation because mine at home is on the ground, so I don't actually need the soil. Okay, so the ground is just throw in, uh, it's about six inches or so. Um, yep, that's uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, just for the home, and then we have the kitchen waste here. Um, I have the banana peels. Yes, banana peels. Where are the banana peels? Uh, Any more banana peels? That one is a good one. Yeah, it's a banana peels. Yeah, it's a banana peels. Yeah, it's a banana peels. So okay, the onion skin, lemon skin, the, uh, all sorts of uh, the mango, yeah, you can the mango skin, lemon skin. Mm -hmm. yeah. Egg shells, you can throw it, but I don't throw it in each other. I throw, I crumble the egg shells and throw it around the spinach and all that so that the snails don't go up there. Yeah. It is a deterrent. Okay. Uh, so uh, HL doesn't really go in. Um, it's just more for putting on the ground to deter the snails from stacking your plants. Especially when you're generating them, the vegetables and all that. You know, it's very tender to the snails. Um, okay, then the, the dry stuff goes in. Then we put in the kitchen base. Uh, to put in the banana peels and all. Uh, I think just for convenience because you don't want to make a mess. Nice the plastic doesn't go in, but because you don't want to make a mess, you just put in the plastic, okay? So, uh, okay. Uh, of course, it's breaks down and all that. Okay, just put in the... Yeah. Put in all the banana peels. Put another layer of leaves. If you want it to communicate, you can put some yellow soil or plain soil in there. Uh, okay, these are okay. Don't use banana leaf because you're a bit hard to compose. Just uh, these are okay, those are soft and okay. Okay, that's the story. Then the next layer, uh, the next day your kitchen waste goes in again. You repeat it until it's full. So that takes probably uh, for me about a week or so to fill up. Once it's uh, filled up, then I will cover it and leave it. 
Mine is not in the open in the garden. Uh, even though it's under the shade, I still cover them. Okay, so and then I put something heavy on top, you know, uh, to make the foundation and uh, uh, the rodents or whatever don't get infected. Mosquitoes are very tough people, huh? so. <laughs> uh, <coughs> so after that, the ones you see now are living every three, four weeks just for me. So do you want to convey? So it is. Uh, you pull up the whole thing. Okay. So it should be dry like this. Uh, in the heat like this. Then we bring the the pump and then we put it next to it on the ground again. And we transfer this whole thing back. So that will be the whole thing. And we transfer this whole thing back. So that will be Great oxygen and you're the uh, compost, okay? So, yeah, go back again. Let's go, go so deep with the oxygen, alright? So you do it about every three weeks, huh? until it matures already, then it's dry. So if, you, if it's a fine weather, you can open up and find it or something like that. Um, if there's any methods, the first will come up with a whole lot of stuff. Okay? Uh, this is very simple. You can leave the foam. Uh, not, not, not much capital investment in it, just your time. You know? um, and then I think you can shave some slides of there. Oh, you put these fish bones, fish bones, fish bones, fish bones. I don't know this. This is more mature. This is number two. And this is quite recent. Yeah. Okay. This one is actually transferring out. Okay. This one you have to wait a while. It's a better month or so. This one just started, so two more months. I saw some worms. Oh yeah, yeah, you are trying to do some worms. Uh, but that's okay. Um, according to this time, we need more oxygen. We probably have to turn it more so that the worms is okay. If you leave it open on a fun sunny day, the place will come and have your dinner then. Or your lunch. <laughs> Okay, so there's no problem. I remember those black soldier flies in there. You can yeah. really uh, hear the sound of it. Well, uh, so but far, it's I, good. Seen, I haven't seen any flies up. Yeah. Okay, the next one. Okay, so this is what we grow. You know, we just recycle some old rags. Good rag, I think. Uh, this is the bone of the lung that we grow. It runs up onto the patio, onto the banana trees and other there. Um, we also have some chili patty and papaya sauce. Okay. I think I brought some chili patty, but I'm not sure where it is. Okay. Yeah, these are chili patty. Uh, I'm just sitting around. Ah, yes, pass it around. And we do have bonga kantan, which I grow at home. Oh, yes, what I have grown is the bonga kantan. The Malaysian tulip, Malaysian tulip is called Malaysian tulip, or the bunga kantan. So whoever likes laksa, okay, you can cut those and eat them. Uh, and this is the bunga telak. It's called the wild pea blue flower. Bunga telak is the wild pea blue flower. Uh, you make the yonya grey, you know, there's a brown color. Uh, this is the coloring from the plant, the flower. Okay, you can actually make it into a tea, but if you want, if you want to use as a drink, take the petals of me, uh, the green stuff out, and inside the filament, you make the filament. So you just make it like a tea. It's tasteless actually, but you can mix it with mint leaves. That's what I do. 
Nyonya Kuih This is the flower for the Nyonya Kuih Thank you very much Thank you 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 so we actually use the seeds when it's dried, so we can uh, regrow that again. Uh, this is a roselle plant. Uh, oh, you, you soak the petals in water. Oh, kurabu, nasi kurabu. So uh, chili padi is here. Um, these are all very easy to grow. Plants, flowers, and all that. Not if you are seeing plants and all that. I mean, it's easy to plant. Okay? So these are very easy to grow. You don't have to spend much time on this. The only thing is when you grow, uh, these are the red color sweet potatoes. Uh, I also have red long green potatoes. Okay? Uh, Okay, this is the outside, which we have mango tree and the guava tree here. That's the papaya growing outside on the fence there. So, these are all uh, the seeds from the compost. So, you just keep it there and you fertilize your you everything at me, eh? plants and it all comes up. Okay, uh, I think thank you for that. This is the Bona Santan tree. We call it the wild ginger plant. Uh, so when it comes up, it grows from the ground. So the flower actually comes up from the ground, okay? It's not at the top. It's from the ground, it grows up. So this is like that. This one will be a flower here. So we can turn. Um, that's it. Uh, not much. Oh, yes. You can see this is a bigger dot. No growth yet because it's still young. So it's just starting. Okay. Oh, that's the pineapple that I grew. The last pineapple I had, the squirrels went before I could harvest it. And this is coriander. So cool coriander. So it's quite fragrant. You can replace your normal coriander leaves and all that. Uh, so and then it grows up. You can grow it quite easily. All the seedlings and all that. So I grow them as well. So this is the lemon tree. Uh, the last storm took away half of the tree. <laughs> so it does not so you are not part of it. But it's actually a lemon there. And the lemon is very good. Yeah, so all the compost is the one two three there. Uh, this is the material compost inside there. This is the impression to see. Uh, so we're still waiting for it to to grow. It takes a while. This is not of uh fertilizer. Yeah. But not too much water, okay? There's some banana going down here which you can see. Uh -huh. Okay. Any questions? Anybody else? Is it coming? All right. Um, thank you very much, uh, Miss uh, Moyin, for for sharing. Okay. So. Well, I mean, this this is the view I have uh, I've seen when I came I mean went to house uh, this afternoon. Uh, I can I mean I can really see that well. There's like three composed beans over there, and also uh, what's more interesting is they have one more bean over there. It's like she mentioned. Well, sometimes I have more composed than what I can use. So what happened is uh, she she just put the 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 the, the, the non compost the major compost into this bin and then uh, she will use it in, uh, for future. So, and then, as you can see, um, all the plants she has is all by fertilizer, I mean, except uh, the chicken poop, that's it. And, I mean, to me, I, I mean, I, when I walk in, it's like, wow, there's a lot of trees and, and so on. It's, 
it's just really good feeling. So yeah, um, perhaps with this compose, uh, we can actually well uh, go further. So we can actually use this compose for kitchen gardening and so on. Um, like Miss uh, Lee, she I mean she just plants some uh, vegetables and so on. She can just cut and then bring it over to uh, I mean to, to the kitchen and just serve it as a dish. Uh, as a dish. So yeah, um, that will actually bring it uh, to our future event. Uh, okay. For the moment, we are actually planning the, the next event to be kitchen gardening. So, well, gardening, maybe we don't need, really need a, a huge space, a, a huge garden. So, uh, Miss Tan has, uh, from Sedda, she has actually uh, uh, how's it, agreed to come for, for the next one. Uh, hopefully, I mean, she will be free for that. So she will be sharing on kitchen gardening in uh, on the fourth of July. So you just a show of hands, like, uh, how many of you would actually be interested in kitchen gardening? No one. Can you explain more? Oh, okay. I okay kitchen gardening. Um, for example, well. For example, what would you like to grow um, if you are home? Chili. Chili. Herbs. What else? Vegetables. Vegetables. Like our, our own, very own nephew, he has grown some bok choy. But unfortunately, before, right, the, the day before she went to harvest, uh, it was destroyed by uh, some best. Some pests. So, yeah, I mean, what, what should we do to actually deter this kind of pest? Um, what is suitable to be to be planted? I mean, it's not possible to, to plant a passion fruit in a, in a condominium, for, uh, for example. So what is the suitable things we can plant at home? So, sorry? Anti mosquito plants. <laughs> that one, that one can be bring forward to, uh, I mean, uh, what's it called? Office gardening as well, I think. <laughs> the balance. So yeah, uh, what other things? If uh, would, would you like to know if kitchen? I mean, you talk about kitchen gardening. Okay. So yeah, uh, just wondering, uh, Jose, how many of you would be interested in? the topic uh, kitchen gardening. Um, apart from that, Miss Tan is actually uh, very good in which is, uh, she, she's very good in organic farming. So at the same time she will actually explain more on organic farming. Let's say without the use of fertilizers, uh, we can use compost, uh, what else, what other methods to deter the pests and what other methods uh, I mean how how to indicate that is actually organic how to indicate that it, that has some, um, what is it called, pesticides and so on. So yeah, just wondering, uh, I mean, uh, just a show of hands, how many of you would be interested in kitchen gardening? Um, I suppose... It's actually growing in the balcony. Okay, so I think there's around 30%, 40% of you... Balcony, it's balcony. Okay. It's basically balcony. But it's for you, the reason. Yeah, it's used for kitchen. Well, um, to be used in kitchen. Not actually grow in the kitchen. Not not this kind of Okay. Uh, so we, okay. Tell me what. Um, what we'll do is we'll actually we we'll, we'll find what is the things we, we can share, and then uh, by then we we I mean I'll say then you guys decide on whether uh you guys want to uh, I mean, and then you guys can actually give us feedback what what you would like to show. Let us know. Yeah, we will keep this thing. Just that. Uh, no. All right. So I would say um, that's the end of uh, the, the the session. Um, before just just yeah, before we end, is there any other questions uh, right now from the floor? Any other sharings that you guys would like to uh, make? Uh, how's it? Maybe it's not uh, about uh, composting. Maybe it's other things. Any other sharings you guys want, want to announce? Public announcement and so on. No. Okay, right. 